Welcome to Forensic Gameology, hosted by MoonlightCrew.com. Reviews or previews for science. In seven minutes or less. The Bermuda Crisis is a Kickstarter preview of, of this game. And so let's tell you a little bit about it. So it's a hand management um, tech tree trading game. So what you're doing is you're trying to build this technology of three different camps. And when you build it, you get victory points. So that's a, that's a win condition. One of the uh, various win conditions um, is to getting to 14 victory points. So you're doing that by managing these resources. So you have rare and common resources. So you're trying to um, play those. I need two coal and two stone for that, and I get a victory point and that ability. So same. So as you go up the tech tree, you get better abilities. Um, also, you're trying to, every time you, some, uh, you get an artifact, this time moves up. And so if this gets to the finish line, then you count up these nature points here. And so they're different than victory points, but that's what those are. So the entire time, you're trading. And so you're working with these cards. You're trying to fulfill these for victory points, your catalyst cards. These, this attacks, helps you, and these are like a wild card, these venture cards. Um, and so you're playing those cards, you're buying those cards, you're buying your thing, you're trying to get victory points, and you're trading the entire time. So let's talk simplicity versus complexity. This game is simple in that it starts off with a beginner, uh, the basic skill map, and then after you've played a game or two, you can advance on to the advanced skills map. So it gives you just one choice uh, per upgrade, whereas on the opposite side, you have two or three choices per upgrade. So it's simple. You can just, even if you want to play the advanced side, someone else can start out on the basic side and be competitive and understand what they're doing. Um, there's, there's complexity in the game, but the rules complexity is low. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think you have a limited number of things you can do, and it gives you right here in the back of the rule books, it has a list of everything you can do. So here, you can do anything, and there's no timing um, rules. So you can do all of these actions that are available to you, and you can do them in any order, any number of times except, I think, buying a Mystique. You can only buy one of these cards a turn, right? unless you upgrade. So that's, that's uh, what, what you can do. And so um, I like that they have that, and it's very helpful. So it tells you exactly what, what you can do to turn. It's pretty simple. Uh, luck versus strategy. There's a bit of luck in this game in that some of these, some of these resources you need will be stone or coal. And as you draw, uh, you may not get them, and somebody else might get them. But that is mitigated by the trading nature of this game. Uh, in that when it's your turn, you can initiate trades and try to get what you need, and that would actually help uh, help your neighbors. Like It's going to help the, your opponents as well, so they, while they won't always be inclined to trade with you, sometimes it will be in their best interest. Uh, the, other, uh, the other thing is that there are so many different routes to take. There's so many different strategies to try, because uh, just this last game I played, I only upgraded through this middle camp. Whereas other games I've played, I've tried to hit all of the bottom and then all of the... You can just do any number. Just, and on top of that, you can do a whole bunch of different uh, strategies than your opponents are. Or you can try to race out the... like r Rush the game to an end. Or you can try to slow it down so you can get more points. There's just a lot of strategy here. Yeah, I do think... I think there's, there's a good amount of luck. Sometimes you have these catalyst cards which help you get victory points. If you have seven or fewer already, you have one condition. But if you have eight or more... You have to do maybe a harder one, and um, sometimes you're stuck with one that you just can't complete, and there's no way to get rid of them unless you complete them. But there's an ability here, so so you would look on this and be like, okay, well this one lets me discard. One of these lets you discard and draw a new one. So then maybe you just work for that, and that's true for all of them, really. If I can't get an artifact, well this lets me draw a lot more cards that I'll have a higher chance of drawing this artifact that I need, which is like a wild unless you do other things. So I think that there's so much strategy that mitigates the luck that's in the game. Um, there's attacking, there's so much interaction as well. Um, the trading helps out with that luck so much. Um, so let's talk fun versus boring. I kind of started getting into it. There's a lot of interaction in this game and I really like that. There's attacking, there's um, trading, which is not necessarily bad. And a lot of, yeah, so like there's a lot of interaction, but not all of it's bad. And so um, I also really like tech trees. I like to be able to upgrade and get better things. And so I like that there's three different ones that do very different things. And so, like Tom said, you can have different strategies in the different games. Or even in the same game, you can start off with this strategy and then say, okay, well, actually, I want to do this one now, or whatever it is. I, I really appreciate that aspect of the game. And the, the win condition, there being multiple things to keep track of, that's, it's, it's crazy to keep track of in your head, but it's also fun to, to be like, okay, well, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get as many nature points as someone else. So I'm going to do victory, which means I'm going to try to slow this down so the game doesn't end. So I, there's a lot of ways. I, I, I like this game. 
I really enjoy the tech tree and I like that you can all pursue different strategies from it. But on top of that, it's fun to realize that if you go up the same camp, there's so many different choices of what you'll upgrade that you could be pursuing the same camp and still be, be pursuing different strategies. Um, a lot of the fun comes from these catalyst cards <laughs> because they'll say something like, make a trade involving a diamond, make a trade involving an ambush card, attack your opponent and then be attacked by your opponent. Mm -hmm. And so people like will do for one trade. People will do outlandish, crazy things, and, and you'll be like, "What are you doing? How does that even <laughs> help you? Why are you giving away your resources?" And then you're like, "Wait a second! Wait a second! I'm not sure I want this trade anymore." Right? And, they get, and, they, and they get a point. And so uh, there's there's just a lot of I think there's some uh, uh, some humor here that's not like built into the game. It just happens. Like you'll yeah. start laughing as you play this game because people will make things that may seem against their, their best interest, and then you realize they're getting points, and, and <laughs> it's alarming how fast that can happen. Yeah. Um, so this is a fun game, and uh, I've enjoyed it each time I've played. Yeah, and so has everyone else that we've played with. Um, as friends at Gameology, we will give away a free glitter painting for every 500 subscribers we get to. So make sure to subscribe now on YouTube. The glitter painting will be some nerd reference thing like the superhero icon. It could be you that wins. The Bermuda Crisis. We've presented the evidence. You be the judge.